good we're recording everything check 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 microphone check one two one three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve gemini scorpio podcast is here and speaking Yo. of 12 this is the 12th episode 12 i didn't even know we was live to go my bad 12 episodes cheers to that shout out to bel-air the bel-air family mm-hmm. uh can we turn that down a little bit mr j here i'm here you already know the vibes, Healer Bay, aka okay, Sade in the building. Yeah, we got the cameras, we got the lights, action. Hey, um, what we do we want to start off with uh you wanna go straight to um you wanna talk about uh Miami or nah you wanna keep that in Miami? Well, sure, we can talk about Miami. Let's go. I mean you don't wanna have the like the, the weird experience. What weird experience? You was like you like y'all hit somebody. Oh my God! Yes, hold on. Our whole Uber driver, excuse me, Lyft driver, that we made our private driver for the weekend hit a biker. Only when you get money, you get private drivers and shit. <sighs> That's what you do when you're special. Anyway, she hit a biker, and I swear to God, I thought it was a deer or something. That's how hard it hit her. I just didn't know if we was gonna get out the car to a dead body or not. I was shook. Like it took us a couple of seconds to process to get out the damn car. Cause I think we all was just in shock, but we jump out. The girl on the scooter is fine. She's a little bruised up and you know, me and my girl wishing her well, but the strangest thing that alarmed me, she gets up and she's like, man, fuck my life, my mom's scooter. And I just was like, you know what? Welcome to fucking Miami. <laughs> like, it was definitely an experience. Yeah, some weird things was going on. That it was quite a day. Well, yeah. when I was made it quite a day. You was I, I remember you were saying you were speaking a couple things like it was weird. It was just the whole day was weird or something like that. Yeah, got into it with some guy from Detroit, just loud and obnoxious. Just like just loud and obnoxious. Like men just not knowing how to <clears throat> leave women alone. Just because we stand here don't mean the means to talk to us. Like and if we don't want to talk, get your drunk belligerent ass on. But yeah, one of those days. You think girls put, play a part in that? Mm, no. Not at all? You don't think like girls can like probably exit or not like argue back with men or something like that? I do agree with that, but it just, also just in reaction point. So I feel like if you go up to a female and you try to talk to them and they're like, oh, you know, nice about it, like, no thanks. And then you again come back to assert yourself and it's again like, no thanks. And then you kindly move over to not, you know, be indulgent to keep talking to your friend and they still come over, no thanks. And then it's like, what you mean? I got to move or whatever. It's just like, no. So no, I don't think girls are in the fault for. But if a guy is being yeah. belligerent, you don't think you could just walk away like I'm off this guy. Well, if we're in an establishment and we're there regardless, I shouldn't have to move myself out of an establishment because you don't have any self-control. See, if I'm standing there and I'm not, this this is a public establishment. I don't always should have to leave because somebody doesn't know how to keep themselves in order. So sometimes, yes, it means walking to the other side, but if they follow you to that side, now it's like, yo, give me my space. And for the record, we did leave. <laughs> like, you know. And I was so. curious about the, uh, like, yeah, but- men and women, like, the, the, uh, the interaction between men and women when when niggas are in there feel entitled bag like I gotta get your number and if you don't want to give me your number then fuck you bitch you ugly anyway I don't want to fuck with you yeah. I was trying to get I was trying to understand that like both parties in that yeah I, I feel like it just depends on a man I don't feel like all men are like that I think there's a perfect gentleman going around that if a girl says no they're okay with that like no worries you guys look beautiful have a good night um and then you have your other kind of men that just you know, don't like to be rejected, don't like to hear the word no, don't like, you know, already feel entitled over women, their body, their mind, how they react in general. So I just think it depends on what men you're encountering. Unfortunately, we cannot determine who we're encountering. We don't know you. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But, you know, I always do recommend in those moments, you know, I personally just don't want no nigga punching me in the face. And that's what they're doing now. So you know, but sometimes it's also overwhelming. Like, yo, let me enjoy myself. Like, you know what I mean? I don't, yeah. No, hundred so. percent. No, I get it. Yeah. So. Well, shout out to Miami Nights, man. My my uh. He was lit out there in Miami. He was with Shaq and them in mm. a commercial. Mm-hmm. It was cool. I wasn't really lit. I was I was there all day, and then by the time I was done, I was tired, honestly. But I mm-hmm. smoked a cigar for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Did you know? Did you find the flavor out that you smoked? Uh, you know, I, I think they have because they have like box and it's like Colombian, like Cuban, like you could get all your, you know. I don't, I'm not too big on the cigar thing. I'm, you know, I still gotta. No, nah, me know. either. So I don't know. Mm, I just I know, know it's different types. So like, the dude, um, my guy Rob, shout out to Rob Gordon. 
I'm just letting you smoke your hookah. Oh, I, <laughs> that should be bad. loud when I be. My so, bad. Go nah, ahead. I'm gonna pause when you, nah, you, when you hit good. the mic. So like, um, hey, yo, pause twice. My, so my bad. Nah, so like he had got me one. Shout out to Rob Gordon. Uh, shout out my guy Arian. Um, and we were just smoking a hookah and drinking henny on a balcony, and then it was cigar, just cigar, not a hookah. I mean, yeah, smoking a cigar yeah, and yeah, drinking yeah. a henny on a uh, on a deck. Yeah, on a deck, and you know what I'm saying? It was just chilling, but yeah, that it, was it. Miami always a vibe though. It was raining, which was unfortunate, but we was just still at. Me and my girl Corey was talking about it. Shout out to Slim C. We was out there just like, yo, Miami the only place that could rain, and we still just gonna be outside, just walking around with our hoods on, just like, yeah, we in Miami. Like, even though it's raining, like Shit. it's just a vibe. It I wasn't. Heard it was, I heard it was charging like eighty dollars from up the street when it was pouring down raining, from up the street to down the street to go to the club and uh oh. for Lyft and Uber. Like it was crazy. Niggas Damn. was taxing niggas. Damn. Damn. Shout out to our private driver because she was charging us twenty dollars to get fucking blocks away in traffic. Everything kept the price. Shit. And then we had our ass drop her off. Uh, whole time, no, it was just a lot going on with our private owner, private driver, excuse me. It, yeah. Yes. It, Super Bowl weekend definitely pays a part in why they were jacking up the fucking prices. So, but yeah, she held us down with the pricing. Shout out to the Miami Knights. Can we, uh, we always skip this. So like, I'm trying to get to the stuff, get, get to the stuff we don't usually talk about before we really get it started for real. Right. Like. Power. We we always say we're oh, gonna talk yeah. power, but towards the end we always forget and be like fuck power. It was bullshit anyway. So wait, so they did skip an episode last week, right? They didn't skip an episode. They just skip a skip. A skip the week. They I always mean, do that though in but, a season. But well, we just skipped like a whole month. Like, why the hell did they skip a week? Like, they think it's so good that they want to make us wait. All it did was make me mad. It wasn't about as good. That was dumb. Or when, they just probably needed more time to put in all this extra bullshit that they putting in. Yeah, because they had like three additions on mm. after the credits and another credits and the after credits, another thing and another. No, you're right. Then, and then drop his introductory to his sequels. Like, I mean, he had a lot going on with this and then episode. It, it was Super Bowl last weekend. so Oh, I, oh he was make, scared about them ratings. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Wow. But, let's talk but I about heard it. ratings on Super Bowl went down yeah. tremendously. Shout out to, um, yeah. shout out to Jennifer Lopez. Oh, yeah. Cause she's looking like a tank. Yeah, she definitely bodied it. Man. Um, J Yo, JLo's 50. Can we talk about that? Let's talk about it. Like, that she's 50 and she's out here looking like a fucking 29 year old i mean uh she looks great yeah when you get in the bag i would hope you look great yeah but i think that's also some of that i think that's just she's gen genetically inclined like i don't think it's all because she it's yeah. not like she has super surgery and body done she definitely be in a gym she's always dancing and working on her craft so a lot of that too is you know mm -hmm. some other greats that are 50 and looking phenomenal like gabrielle union looks amazing she 50 yes shout out to gabrielle union like <laughs> she's all right. yeah yeah but to power um I got, I don't know how I feel about power. Like, I, I really. I know you like to think, yo, sh don't stink, but lean a little bit closer, see that roses really smell like do, do, do. That's what I think about it. Oh, that they roses and they stink. That shit smell like <laughs> shit. Straight doo doo. It's pretty over the years, but it stink. Like, what I will say is, uh, first of all, shout out to Tommy because he had the best episode one. Um, and the season finale. Probably was the second best episode of this series, but all in all, the series, I mean, this season was just dirt. Like, mm. this shit was just not, they, they, what I didn't, let me get into it. What I didn't like is, so when Tommy was about to kill Tasha in the, I don't know if it was the first episode or his episode, when it was Tommy episode and he was about to kill Tasha for finding out um, she killed uh, Keisha, she was in the kitchen. She turned around and she was like, just make sure you take care of uh, Tariq or something like that. Now, in, a, in episode 15, the uh, season finale, she she took a knee and looked up and said, make sure you uh, take care of Tariq. So I just don't like the inconsistencies. It's like, yo, how are you going? Like, you, we're playing it back. So that means it will have to happen again. Another thing that I didn't like, the first, I think the first time when when they was getting shot at, when Ghost and Tommy was getting shot at, they ran in the warehouse and I think they killed the dudes. They showed the dude. That they killed, they showed his face. It was not Cedric in the in the <laughs> no, it's like, so it's like, come on, make they this all, shit they, realistic. They office, Tyler Perry. Man, they turned this shit into Empire. Like, oh I my just, god, come on, Fifty. Um, yeah, I did not pay attention to detail in that way. So I think Fifty must have did that to the tons of people who probably just didn't give a fuck and paid attention 50 about was it. Fucking right, whoever. You know what I'm saying? Um, but my biggest thing is, it's just that 
a lot of what was in the last episode, I just didn't get throughout the whole episode. Not get throughout, like like something you mentioned too that I noticed. I felt like they made fifty. I mean, Ghost. Ghost's character so shallow, like he towards wasn't the end, like, like that. it was just like he's just so self. Now he was being a whole cunt, like the whole yeah. episode. It was a couple things he said. The whole series, he was just like, yeah, well, Tasha told her to take her chicken head self back to the hood, and she had to ask him like, did you even ever love me? Because he was being so harsh. That I was like, I don't remember 50. That's not what sold us on 50. Every I'm 50. Everybody Ghost. loved Ghost because we he was still felt like right he was trying to do the right thing. In the last episode, it's just like he was, he didn't give a fuck about the right yeah. thing. It just was like, I'm winning, period. Right. Like, and whether then, y'all at y'all expense or not. And I didn't get that through the whole season. Um, and then when he was having a conversation with, that's another inconsistency. When he was having a conversation with Tariq, he did not say, now why the fuck would I do that? When he was like, um... I thought you said you was gonna turn yourself in. He was like, look around. Why would, why the fuck would I do that? He didn't say that. The first thing he said was, I'm gonna have your back. I'm gonna make sure I, I take care of you. Like that's what he said. So to play it over is like, is this what Tariq is hearing? Like, cause he right. didn't say that. And like, maybe like I was trying to get it, like maybe they were trying to do it from a perspective standpoint. Like, you know how they chop certain things up. Like, so from uh this episode is about, I don't know, um, Tasha. So in this episode, it's gonna be like this, and then from this, so this is what they were taking out of it. So that's why they were like cutting certain parts out to give you a better idea of what they were thinking in the moment. But it just was a poor job. So I don't know. But yeah, if power didn't sell me like it sold me all the other times. I mean, I ain't like gonna lie. One and two, if they, like, you know, you know, when the power book two come out, you know, I'm gonna watch still. I'm gonna watch still too. I'm gonna watch all watch. that shit just because yeah. it's relevant, I guess. But yeah, the shit is just. It's not even because it's relevant. I'm just gonna watch. You know what I'm saying? Because you know I've been watching. It ain't shit else like coming on for real until snowfall come on because when snowfall come on i am out here you hear me now not missing that, that episode trash nah that's just starting to get trash no, unbelievable no, not 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 realistic no i i am looking forward to my good friend franklin you even said it was how. starting to get not realistic no i didn't like the last episode that's what i didn't like the last episode threw me off but overall no i'm definitely standing for snowfall right now and until proven otherwise in the first couple episodes of the new season one so. through ten what you get what you ranking uh power power overall? power yeah six that's fair i give it a cool six six yeah. and a half six Boom. i'm giving prison break ten i'm giving the sounds of anarchy ten i'm sounds giving of anarchy definitely gets ten that I'm giving, shit had me on my toes the whole entire season however that is another one that i fucking hated the last episode god damn like I like they gotta stop doing that. Like if you gonna have a whole hit the whole season, please let the finale meet up to the whole damn season, please. Yeah, how he went driving on a bike to kill himself. Remember, like just stupid, but shit, dumb as shit for real. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> what's up? Yo, shout out to Luke Belair. Um, first response is getting us right. You know what I'm saying, get us, get us right. Sip, on, sip. You know what we drinking? Mm. Uh. I do want to shout out, since we are out of shout outs, I haven't given her a shout out in a long time, but I definitely want to shout out the credit goddess because she has been on my ASS. Um, just checking in, making sure shit is good, telling me to follow up with this, make sure I log in and check this. Uh, credit goddess also, her page got hacked at like 34,000. So she is starting from ground up, but I told her, look, you that, you've been doing that and it's working out good for me. So I know it's working out for our other clients. If you haven't been working on your credit, Shout out to the credit goddess. Shout out to the credit goddess, even though I didn't get a call and like, I don't even know when. Because she kind of equates our accounts the same. She's like, I updated your stuff with her. Oh, that's what's yeah, up, man. Shout, so, out, shout out to yeah. the credit goddess then, man. You're yeah. getting this right, man. Yeah. You ain't just getting shout out right. You ain't, you ain't being selfish with your ass. But mm -hmm. Shout out to her. No, she's doing her thing. <clears throat> so that's where we are. So what's up? What we talking about, man? What you want to talk I don't about? Know, let me get, get your topic going. Like, get, me, get me started this time, if you don't mind. All right. So I wanted to talk about... Uh, I think I had some time to think about it. I want to talk about, do you think that once the trust is broken in a relationship, that is no going back? Um, I think depending on the effort. Mm. You know, I definitely think depending on the effort. Break it down for um, me. So I think, you know, once trust is broken, it is very hard to get it back. Like, it's not an easy task, especially depending on the person you're dealing with. Like, for example, I am a person, it is very hard for me to let things go. And that is something that I'm working on individually as a person, not even just in aspects of relationships, but even friendships. Uh, you know, my family, you do something to me, it is very hard for me to let it go. I have to do a lot of inner work to let that go. So because of that, 
again, knowing your partner is probably essential to it because some people are going to need different things when that trust is broken, depending on, you know, who it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, I know if the trust is broken, broken for me, um, you know, trust is already to me actions followed by the intentions aligning to show that I'm not harming you or this is not being done to you or I'm doing this in good cause of you. Right. So once that is broken and somebody nine times out of 10, if the trust is broken is because you either feel violated or betrayed or something of that sort. I think that the reassurance has to double up and follow that. So it has to come back to just experiences over and over and over after that to show like, I'm not harming you again, or I didn't mean to do that. So going forward, you should not witness that. And I'm going to do that in a sequence to show you action after action that you can see that I'm willing to earn your trust back and not break your trust and that was an accident or a mistake etc cetera, etc cetera, if that makes sense so it's like is it in the forgiveness or um acceptance or like what what do you think has to be done or for self-evaluation and on the other partner right what do you think has to be done to gain that trust back on both uh, parties on both sides it's crazy because i think it's it's definitely two-sided uh so if somebody breaks your trust uh first things first if you are choosing to continue to walk the path with them you gotta let them get room to earn the trust back you can't just kind of be closed-minded like you know what we'll just work for it and then they're working for it and you're just like but still you still you can't do that like you have to give it room to be fixed, it room to breathe and for you guys to grow through it. Um, I definitely think it's a lot of forgiveness that goes into that. Um, and it's forgiveness of self because, you know, sometimes, you know, when trust is broken, a lot of times the person always blames themselves. Like, you know, they did this, like this happened to me, but like, damn, I can't believe I let such to such play me or damn, I didn't, can't believe they, you know what I'm saying? So you have to forgive yourself for, you know, going through that process, like sometimes when people do things, it's don't even got nothing to do with you. Like it is unintentional to harm you is they're dealing with their own things. Right. Um, so you still got to forgive yourself. And then the other person has to forgive themselves for what they did. Um, you know what I'm saying? So they have room to grow and get better of mo moving forward. So you're saying you got to forgive yourself for somebody breaking your trust? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because again, a lot of times people internalize that like and they take it personal like you know what i mean like it's it's taken very personal like you know damn how could i let this person violate me how could i let my guard down how could i let them in to be able to do this to me why didn't i see that coming or like it goes into this whole self-sabotaging thing of that i did something to cause that and again a lot of times is none of it's never personal like you what know? about if it's for the other people that don't feel like mm -hmm. they were they let themselves down. Like, what about the people that's like, you just violated me and you broke my trust, period. Yeah. Um, I think that's okay, too. Like, you know, so that's why I said it's just you have to definitely make sure, like, once they violate, it's, it, it, like I said, is if you're going back into it with them and, like, you broke that, but I'm like, you know, we could still work on it, then you got to let that go. Like, you got to let that go. Now, if you're not moving forward with them, look, cool if they violate you you don't want to deal with them you don't want to talk to them there's nothing wrong with that either like right. there's at like sometimes like you don't have to forgive people like you can like you could forgive in a sense where you let it go but you don't have to rekindle mend or do anything with somebody who's broken your trust betrayed you that crossed the boundary for you that you can't bear right. like you don't have to i definitely you think the, um to. the most important part of like forgiving somebody is self-awareness right and then uh boundaries as well like knowing how far you can go and knowing what you can and cannot do. So you have to always self-reflect. And I say that to say, for example, hypothetically, let's, let's talk about cheating, right? Let's say if um somebody was to cheat on a significant other, right? And you want to take them back. But what happens is you start to resent that person and you don't reflect on yourself and you, you want to give them so much of yourself that you're not loving yourself. And what yeah. I mean by that is like, you, you, you say, okay, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. We're going to still be in this relationship. But now when you say you forgive somebody, you have to put the past to the past, but when you really, when you're, when you are so quick to accept and really, and not self-evaluate yourself, you don't understand that you're not ready to forgive them. You know what I'm saying? That's your, that you're not ready to move forward. And what happens is through the relationship, you start to resent each other. You start to, well, you start to resent them for breaking your trust. You start to second guess everything they do. You start to, uh, just, just move in a way that's not forgiving. Mm -hmm. And I think the first important step is to look yourself in the mirror and say, yo, am I capable enough 
of moving forward with really forgiving this person. And if I am, am I willing to put what they did to the past, put that in the past and leave it there? So a uh, question to that. So if you're in the forgiven stage, well, not forgiven stage. So say somebody breaks your trust, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you do want to work it out with the person. But of course, like for forgiveness is definitely a process thing is in itself. Like that's not something that you could be like, you know what? I forgive you. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, I want to forgive you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm working on forgiveness, mm -hmm. right? Does that mean that you shouldn't deal with the person until you're ready? Or or does that mean that you take like space, a break? Like, does that mean like, can you be committed to growing with the person through the forgiveness? Like, what does that look like? Because I think, I, th mm -hmm. I think it all can coexist in the same world, right? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about giving somebody space and also the first thing you said was uh, not not continuing with that person until you're ready. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, one and the same, right? So it's like if you're if you do something to break my my trust, I have to self evaluate, and I and part of self evaluating is knowing, understanding how much time I need for myself to really give myself enough time to let this digest and and think about this, right? Um, a part of that phase is okay. Now I know, and for the other part, they have to be okay with letting them have their time like you know what i did do something and of course i want to show them that i didn't mean it i want to prove my love but at the same time i have to respect their boundaries and i have to respect them as a person to let them have their time to make up the decision that's going to be best for both of us and um so i think all of it coexists in the realm but once you take that once you take that step forward you have to continue to go forward and not go back and i think a lot of times in relationship people continue to like worry about the past and they dwell in the past so much that they can't they can't go forward because they're too busy living in the past. Sorry. No, you good. I mean, that's just that's what I think. Yeah. Like, so you know, I think that like because I think that forgiveness isn't a on on or off switch. Like, it's something that you know does require like some type of journey through that process. Um, I think that it is okay to coexist with like so. One, I think that you have to know your partner. You have to know your partner in a way where they, you know, for example, like Bob Marley says you know, everybody's going to hurt you. You just got to pick the one person, you know what I mean, that you know. I, that's worth it, basically. That's, that's like, worth it. it basically. Word it, by the, word, but basically, yeah. yeah. The word, the word, word for word, I can't, but it literally says everybody's going to hurt your feelings. Everybody's going to, some, there's, I don't think there's never a time that, like, somebody's not going to hurt your, your feelings, but, you know, because, like, we unintentionally do things, like, sometimes that we don't even understand ourselves, you know what I mean? So I think because of that, and that's with friendships, that's with, family that's what relationships that's what all aspects of ships like you know what i mean i will say is that sometimes your feelings are going to get hurt sometimes you know so i guess it also depends on like what what exactly you're looking at as mistrust like like what what broke your trust in a way right and then once you understand that do you understand your partner to understand that it was a mistake or you know that's something they're growing through that they're trying to get out of uh did they do it like, you know, because I'm not telling people who, like, people, some people really just, like, I mean, I did it, I don't, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Like, you know what I mean? And it's, like, how do you move past when it's, like, you care about somebody, but they don't see nothing wrong with what they do. So I think it just depends on what is categorized for you as <clears throat> mistrust or how they broke your trust. And then from there, identifying the type of person you're dealing with. Like, did they mean this? Or what intention they're coming from? Like, are they really trying to harm me? Like, is this something, like, they're, they're really doing, is it, like, to me or is it something that you know we could grow through and then i think once that is decided i think that has to be an honest conversation look i want to forgive you but i am going to need some time and i'm gonna need you to work through me we can be committed to growing through the forgiveness however it's going to be steps to that and a lot of those steps is going to be you know just us having boundaries us um you know, self-caring and worrying about ourselves and focusing so that we're our best selves so we don't keep moving into a place of mistrust or mistreatment, That's et a great point. But what about those times when, like, people break each other's trust unintentionally, right? It's like I didn't do anything intentional to break your trust. Or I might have broke your trust because I feel like... Let's talk about, like, this woman sense of intuition, right? Sometimes women have this this gut feeling, and a lot of times it'd be wrong. Well, not a lot. Wow, sometimes that's it'd be crazy. sometimes their intuition. That's, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> sometimes, oh, oh, but that's not. <laughs> sometimes be wrong. Sometimes their intuition be wrong, or sometimes the communication just be misconstrued, right? So it's like a woman that had this intuition, this gut feeling, and then she'll act on her gut feeling, and then once she act on her gut feeling, it's like she betrayed or she 
she mistrusted, if that's a word, she lost the trust of her loved one because of a feeling that wasn't even real. Hold on, y'all, because, you know, I ain't going to contradict what the fuck I believe in. So to me, uh, intuition is simply when energies are not aligning with you. Like, so something's off. Your intuition is not something that's just wrong. Something's off. Now, your accusation may be wrong. You get what I'm saying? But when your body starts to give you feedback to what you're feeling, it's not wrong. It's you're feeling that. something. You're feeling believe something. I, I believe. Do. I believe. That's you, what I heavily believe. I believe in. you're feeling something, but your your emo- if they say like if you let your emotions guide you, that's when you make a lot of the wrong decisions because of emotions. And I feel like once you start to let these, because your gut feeling is an emotional feeling, is is emotionally I like, driven. I feel like feeling your emotion and acting on your emotion is two separate things. But that's what I'm saying. I feel like it's totally okay to feel your intuition and process it and deal with it. But it's not okay to lash out on your intuition without the proper facts or, you know, to be true. But you can absolutely feel your intuition, feel your emotions, feel that negative pit in your gut, you know what I'm saying, and sit on it and render on it. It doesn't mean that you have to act out of emotion because you have a gut feeling. But when I was know? when I when I posed the question, I was saying that a woman does something because of that gut feeling. Like you feel something in there. Sometimes you... I don't think every woman No, does no, that. no. I'm saying yeah. when that happens, right? For example, let's say mm-hmm. hypothetically, um a woman feels like her man isn't doing what he's supposed to do, so she decides to go through his phone, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a gut feeling, like you know mm-hmm. what, something is off. I don't mm-hmm. like this. Let me make sure, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, going through that man's phone for him or for somebody else, depending on who you, who you're asking, that could be a the way of breaking mm-hmm. his trust. Mm-hmm. If you get what I'm saying, mm-hmm. how do you deal with that? Or um, how was that even handled? Like, like I mean, I de- I definitely think that um, to a certain degree. You know, we all got to just do a better job at, again, communicating when we have those feelings. So instead of, again, acting on those feelings, just simply asking, like, yo, I'm having a feeling right now. I'm not saying you're doing something or not doing something, but I am having a feeling right now and something doesn't feel right. And having that open, honest conversation with your partner, like, you know, it's making me uneasy. Like, I don't know what's going on. And, you know, I think it's up to your partner, you know, you know, I would I would assume what I would want from you or like my partner in general is to be like, baby, you know, I know you having a feeling. Damn, from you but, or my partner. No, I'm just saying you, but I'm talking about in Damn. generalized, like you know what I'm saying? In general. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whether you was here or not. Like Damn. In ge- why are you saying damn? I'm listening, I'm listening. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm saying in general, like I would want from any partner or friendship, anything. Like just to simply say, look, I know your feelings is off right now. I'm not sure why that's correlating with me. But I'm personally, reassure me, I'm personally not doing that to you. I'm not doing this to you, like, or whatever, or how you're feeling, you know. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I'm here for you. So like, playing devil's advocate, right? You saying reassure mm-hmm. me. Is it my job to reassure you? Like, um, if, if we're together, we, we're supposed to come into this thing with yeah. trust. And if you feel something off, I mean, is that really my fault? It doesn't have to be your fault, but I think that it's nothing wrong with us working together. If that's my feelings, acknowledge my feeling. And I also think that it's not necessarily anybody's job to reassure anybody, but some people that is a love language for them. And if you do care about your partner, you're going to love them the way they need to be loved and not the way you're trying to love, Facts. period. Makes so sense. it doesn't mean like you have to reassure me. But if I say, if you know that's my love language, then yeah, that it does. that is what it takes to love on me. Like, okay. you know what I mean? That That is something that. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, man, shout out to uh, Catch 22 with, with the hookah vibes. You know what I'm saying? We put it on the belly of bottle as well. Um, shout out to our family, you Catch 22. You it's on any bottle you choose. You know what I'm saying? Don't got to be just this Bel Air. Come on, he got to like his own hookah. I hate sharing hookah, son. Everybody knows. I want to smoke my own hookah in peace. Uh, we can share. Go ahead. I'm selfish, that. motherfucker. I'm not selfish, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I be trying to take my time. I, I got to stop when you smoking and when you talking because you don't want to hear it in your mic. You know what I'm saying? So I got to take my time. So, you know, we're going to just start putting two on two on both sides. Parapu. So how you feel about in conclusion to your, your trust topic? Oh, I mean, I feel like we broke it down in a way that people can understand. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, like, because a lot of times women do get that intuition feeling, right? Yeah, and a lot, and a lot of... And I feel like, I don't know. I feel um, everything. Let me tell my fuckers right now. I feel everything. Don't even got to be from your significant other. Like, I could feel if a bitch is blinking at me wrong. Like, I could feel energy from... A lot of uh, times y'all be I, wrong. I could feel, I, just just I admit could to feel, it. I could feel energy from across the room. And let me tell you something right now. More than none, I've been absolutely right. I might been wrong maybe 5% out of my 95% of time. And guess what? That 5%, I'd rather be wrong. Like, you know what so I mean? So you can honestly say you've only been wrong 5%. Of my... Of my intuition on what I feel, yes, I can honestly say that. 
look, let me tell you something. When you are in tune with yourself, you're not no dummy. I know exactly what I feel. And I process my emotions very well. I know when something is off around me. I know when somebody's moving wrong around me. I know. I know, period. You know what? Know it all, shit. No, I don't know it all, but I know a little of everything. And that's a fact on that. Fact and I know a lot of a lot of things. That's a fact on that. I know it. I know a little bit about everything and, and a lot of a, a lot, lot of things. things. You better know it. All right. What you talking about, man? So since we are on the trust topic, you know, something that was weighing heavy on me and just to give a little breakdown. Um, so I've been reading a book. Shout out to Alex, too, because he was definitely one of the ones who recommended this book. Uh, the purpose of the oh shit. Come on, Alex. The purpose of a given life, a given life. The, a perfect a purpose driven life i'm sorry um and basically you're supposed to read a chapter a day it's 40 chapters um and you know i've been reading a chapter a day and um you know it's definitely given me a lot of perspective and just a, a lot of groundedness to my thinking and where i'm going with that is so what is something so out of all the relationships you've been in and in in friendships included you know what i mean i definitely got to include friendships because i think this is important on all sides of the market from all your relationships, like what is something that you feel that you absolutely take from relationships and that obtains to your growth in life? Like something that you learn through just having relationships with people that you take on with like that's something that's really important and valuable that you take away. I feel from like that varies from, from everybody. Well, you know, you what's some, something, what's something from... and that's important? And you, it, I'm sure there's tons of answers, but what's something that's important to you that you take away from relations? Sometimes you gotta let people be them. Is this is that the answer you're looking for? No, it's not about what I'm looking for. I just want to know what's what. It's tons of answers to it. I just want to know yours. Yeah, I've like, learned and like I'm gonna tell you mine. it's just life story. Like sometimes you gotta let people be them, allow people to be them. Because I remember I could tell you an example. My um my brother, this guy done been a Muslim, a Christian, a, a every single thing in a book, and it's like my nigga. Like yo, I remember when he was being a, when he was trying to be a Muslim, everybody was clowning him, and then when he went to Christian, right, everybody was clowning him. And sometimes no matter how hard you try to get somebody to understand something, no matter if it's right or wrong, they're going to go their route regardless. They're going to do what they feel like they're going to do. And it's really, you're losing more of yourself trying to get them to understand you instead of trying to understand them. You know what I'm saying? And accepting them. So that's the one thing that I've, I, that's one thing I've learned from a relationship. Uh, another thing I've learned that sometimes that sometimes y'all are just different people. You know what I'm saying? And is is in the way you go about things, um, doesn't have to be the way they go about things, right? And sometimes you gotta let people be them. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody wanna go out every night and club or whatever the case may be, you ain't nobody parent to tell them they can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something I learned. Uh I've learned that like <laughs> I've learned that so I remember when I used to think um like one of my first relationships, I always call it my first relationship, but like I used to cheat real heavy. And I thought that like once I started stop cheating, that my relationship is gonna be perfect. Like I'm gonna be lit, like I ain't gonna have no issues. I'm gonna be that nigga. And then I learned that, yeah, that's probably just a half of the battle. If that, that's probably 25% of the battle for real. So, like, there's a lot of things I've learned and there's like different relationships of different mm -hmm. times in my life. That's good. That was a great answer. No, for real. Um, so, something that I learned um, that's been dawning on me is, you know, and it's just like I said, all relationships, because I think, like, you know, a lot of times we spend a lot of time, you know, doing. You know, we all wear a lot of hats. Like we're, we're, you know, we're a sister. We're um, some of us are mothers. Uh, we're daughters. We're sons. We're frat brothers. We're, you know, we play a lot of roles. And I think that a lot of times, like what I see, like just you know, from our generation, like for example, I always say the the hurt girl. Every time a girl get hurt, she go find God. Like, like that's like the next thing. Like or the gym or or the gym <laughs> or the gym or you know, work on their appearance. I don't understand, or, yo. Or, what I, I'm sorry, what I don't understand is once a girl break up with a nigga, she start to do everything that will make the nigga like her. Like, why didn't you do that in a relationship? Like, they break up, then she going to the gym. Now she she got her, she getting her credit shit together. She mm. she on her shit. And I'm like, yo, if you did that in a relationship, we probably would still be together. I ain't never understood we, we that. We would probably still be with if they was doing that. Nah, I would not. Uh, nobody. That was generalized thing. Yeah. Though, All my exes about. are my exes for a reason. Oh. Yeah. All my exes live in Texas. Like, okay. So, fact, anyway. I don't even know. Ex what? What is that? Oh, oh, you're a smart man. So, <laughs> so, you know, all that to say, that's that was just to bring that to a category to put into, you know, I think that what I'm learning through just all my relationships and my friendships and even being in motherhood and 
all my family memberships and like whatever we want to call it is always dedicating time to better yourself throughout the whole entire relationship, not just when something prompts you to do it. So like, for example, like I, it's very easy to lose yourself. Like, and I tell people that all the time, like, and just to be transparent, I could get so caught up in worrying about being the perfect mother, worrying about being the perfect girlfriend, worried about that. I lose a lot. Like I lose sight of the things that, you know, that I really just care about or like that like keeps what? me grounded. Like, you know, prayer for sometimes like I pray a lot, but I lose like when I'm prayer, going to church or reading or a lot of things like so like Jeez, that's when, hard. No, well, so listen, let me break it down. So a lot of times like when I'm running around, right, like we already it's hard to pray because a lot of times we're so busy. And then you come home, you pass out. Like, whoa, you know what whoa, I'm saying? whoa, whoa, whoa. What? For you, right? I'm just talking in general. Oh, I'm right. not talking about you. So you know, you're running around, whatever. So, like, I always pray. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, like, don't get that fucked up. But I'm talking about really getting down on your knee and having that time to dedicate, like, an hour to God. Like, whether it be church or whether it be literally to yourself reading about God or talking about God or, do, like, doing those things that keep you closer to your higher self and not just always worrying about somebody or something. Like, you know what I mean? I think that we have to stop, the people as a whole stop, losing ourselves in relations mm -hmm. like you know what i mean i think i'm just to be transparent i'm one of those people that easily loses myself in relations whether that be friendships uh parenting or relationships like i'm very easy to you know like whatever but i also at the same time i also feel like mishaps reminds you mm -hmm. to go back and get grounded right get back on my shit right <laughs> so you know that's why I picked up the book I'm picking up that challenges me to read every day for 40 days straight because whatever the mishaps or if I'm good or not good, that that's the time that I'm dedicating to myself to be getting better always. Because in order for any ship to run, I think you have to always be just getting better yourself you individually. You, know you like, got to feel yourself. Yeah, feel like you have to keep filling yourself up. And it, sometimes, like, again, a lot of times it's not your relations of that other side of the relations to be filling you up with everything. Like you have to go on your own individual journey to keep filling yourself up so that you can have enough to pour and to, you know, give back into these relationships instead of always feeling like you're moving, you're moving, you're losing, you're losing, you're losing things. And then you turn around, you just lose yourself. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so one biggest thing that I'm looking into is just constantly f keeping busy throughout your relations. Like always, focusing on you throughout your relations. Don't ever stop thinking about yourself through your relations. I don't care what you're doing for somebody or what somebody's doing for you. It doesn't matter. Always find a reason to fuel yourself, whether it's through knowledge, whether it's through church or God or just something you love to do as a hobby. Do not ever stop your hobby. Don't ever stop your spiritual journey. Don't ever stop just everything you love to do. Keep doing what you love to do so that your relation doesn't take from you. You know, your relations don't feel like they're taking from you versus adding to it. Like, you know what I mean? You know, so, that'll do that'll make you resent your partner as well because absolutely. it's like you start doing everything for everybody else. And yeah. you, once they not, once you see if they're not doing the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. You start to see that, well, they're not doing that for me. Mm -hmm. And then that, it start, you start to resent them. Mm -hmm. And then you start to like compare things. And you know, comparison is really one of the, one of the thieves, of, the joy. thieves of joy. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like you keep you get to comparing yourself and you get to just saying, well, he ain't doing this, so well, let me do that. So like you really gotta start like like you said, you really gotta do things that you love to do. Right. Um and just let everything else come. How it's so come? crazy. So on top of that, so not only have I been reading, you know, so the steps that, you know, for people who are looking for ways to do that and what that means is like one thing, like I said, I picked up reading again. You gotta pick um, up your cup and start drinking again. You know. But that's neither here nor there. So I started reading again. I also made an appointment with a therapist on February Shout out 18th. to you, but that was dope. Yeah, um, and the reason why I say that a lot because I think that a lot of people think that, you know, people always notate therapists with a negative notion. Somebody's always like, maybe you should go seek out your problems. Go find somebody to talk to to get help. You told you me need that. A, you yeah. need therapy, nigga. Yeah. Yeah, I just tell you that. <laughs> but like, it's really, I really did this without a negative notion. I really did it because I, for myself, want to be grounded. I, for myself, want to have better reactions to things. I, for myself, want to understand myself in a deeper level, even without 
it being a problem. Like it don't have to be a problem. Seek out ways to better yourself in general. And that's just something that I'm doing for me to continuously be my best self. So if all else fails in any relation, guess what? Like you I'm grounded. I'm, I'm a better me. And it's not going to be this detrimental case. That's like, a fact. yeah. That's so, great. Shout out to yeah. you for starting your therapy Monday. Yeah. I'm excited. Cheers I'm excited to that. that. Uh -uh. Um, and reading y'all yeah, pick up a book. One thing I've, I've realized is like, yo, feeding yourself is really key. It makes you feel a lot more productive. It gives you perspective on a day. Every time I read a chapter, I get a new perspective on the day because I'm asking myself questions of just like what matters today, what matters in the moment. It helps you to really analyze things in a better light. Also gets you to just not be like they say, uh, the uh, idle mind is the devil's playground. So you're not thinking about you have things that you have no business thinking about, like because it should be something that's feeding you. So if you think about something that's for the positive, it's for the better, or how I can, it's not like negative thoughts or what ifs and why nots, and, and you know you're you're literally vibrating in an energy that's going to benefit you in the long run. So 100. percent Bob Marley said, um, "Truth is, everybody's going to hurt you." You just got to find the one that's worth suffering for. That's the quote she was looking for. Boom. There we go. <clears throat> uh, let's get into and the- um, Happy belated to Bob Marley, too, because it was just his birthday on the 4th, right? February you know, 4th. Babe, you're Jamaican, right? I think I'm- That's what I'm saying. I think it's February. <laughs> okay. Ta get in your roots. Come on. Let's get into the uh, the shits. What's up with the shits? What are we starting? It's a lot of shits. It's a lot of shits. Oy vey. Let's see what's going on with the shits. Come on. We're going to start with Gail? Hell yeah. Gail ass. So, how do I feel about Gail? Okay, so first, uh, uh, so Gail, as we know, did an interview with Lisa Leslie Gail, as in Gail, Oprah Winfrey's best friend. You know, they do their top interviews of the damn year. Mm -hmm. um, but had an interview with Lisa Leslie regarding Kobe Bryant um, and some of her insight on, you know, his rape case in 2003. Um, so, Alleged rape case, excuse Wait, me. Wait, no, it was a rape case, but he didn't rape her. Well, it was a rape case. It was dismissed. Right, yeah. You, you, you know, we right. just want to be politically correct case. when we're talking. It was a case. Yeah, it was a case. It was a rape case. Yeah. Alleged, over alleged rape that got dismissed. So, so that shit ain't happening. Basically, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Rest in peace, Kobe. Let's put some respect on my man's name, first and foremost. KB. So how I feel about Gail. So first take on how I feel about Gail is, um, you know, the first thing I said is you want to pick, you need to pick what type of interviewer you want to be. Mm. And if Gail chose to be this type of interviewer, that's who she chose to be. Which um, she has done in the past because y'all loved her when she did the, um, the R. Kelly interview. Same Gail. Agreed. So... Me personally, because that's not the type of interviewer I would idolize or I would want to be, I think it was very insensitive, okay. right? Um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, me as an interviewer, I think that's why I'm not one because I'm just a little more going, I would probably empathize more with the situation and the person I'm talking to being somebody close to him. Mm -hmm. um, also, the funeral not happening yet. I'm not talking about the damaging history and his legacy. I would rather give his roses because I, he deserves it, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about the negatives. That's me personally. Um, after the comments, like the backlash that she received about it, you know, of course I knew that people were going to be in uproar about it. Of course that I knew that it was to me ideally wrong. However, I do not think she deserves death threats and the backlash of not being able to walk without security and, you know, feeling fearing for her life due to her interview and style, because that is her profession. So all in all, humanity wise, I didn't think it was right. Okay. But I do not think humanity wise, the people are right for attacking her in the same light. It's not nice. Um, again, it's the same thing when, um, remember when somebody was like, I wish somebody would kill Zimmerman already. And the same thing I said in that time, I said, people are crazy out here. The minute that you influence them to do something, you get somebody innocent that will do the dirty work of a, a mind that's just talking on the internet and really act on these things. Now they have, you know, lost their lives to go to prison, um, 
trying to be, you know, that class hero or doing something to help the situation because that's what they think that people really want. And mm-hmm. all in all, nobody wants to see Gail die. Like, come on now. 100%. So. Um, I think that, sheesh. Oh, it's so many oh places God. to start. I, it's so many places, parts to talk about. All right. Um, should we start with CBS? Should we start with... Uh, Let's start with CBS. It's just the painted picture, right? So we have to understand that CBS is what? Probably the most viewed network in in the country. Like when it comes to news, like one of them, right? So let's say top five, right? I think CBS is probably, some would say CBS is the reason people made Fox. Hmm. Because to get the opposite side of CBS, right? So like um, CBS had 60 Minutes, right? So all of these platforms are were built on media and getting stories out of people that you wouldn't get from anybody else, right? Let's think about, uh, again, we've seen, we seen what happened with R. Kelly. We've seen what, uh, I think the uh, Michael Jackson interview was uh, aired on CBS, no? HBO, that was HBO with Oprah? Not the, not the documentary, the first interview, like when she went to his house. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I think, we gotta look at that, right? So looking at this network, we have to understand what 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 we what we getting, right? Gail, as a journalist, I think she did her job in multiple facets of a way, right? She did her job and she got all she started up all this controversy. First of all, when you when, when we're talking about media personalities, they thrive on going viral. Like that's what their job is to get the to get it sold, right? She asked a question that nobody else will ask. One. Uh, now, when it came to the follow-up, that's when I see it gets a little bit insensitive. Because now it's like you're kind of, you're not asking a question, you're kind of insinuating. It's like, well, um, you wouldn't know, would you? You, 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 like you, She's you, very were, you know what I'm saying? She's so like, you, you wasn't there. So it's not the fact that she asked the question because she did a great job. Because if she didn't ask the question, somebody else is going to ask the question. And the fact of the matter is, people was talking about this. Let's not act like people wasn't talking about him. Like what? I, another part of it is the fact that people were talking about him before the interview. We ain't, we ain't get a Snoop Dogg talking about the um the white chick that was that got suspended and then got reinstated. We ain't get uh, people on her ass like that. People were like t- saying how bad she was, but niggas wasn't coming out like they doing Gail. We ain't hear about no death threats. We ain't hear about no death threats to the comedian. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the dude that did the dark jokes. Like we ain't, his Instagram ain't get deleted. Like, so it's like once, I hate to be like the black versus white, but once Gail do it, because it's black versus black, it's so wrong. And I'm not saying she was right. One bit, I'm not saying she was right, but let's keep the same energy. One, two, yo, first and foremost, like everybody can't do what Gail did. Let's just be real. You know what I'm saying? It's Gail King for a reason. It's Oprah Winfrey for a reason. And let's not get, get it fucked up. And it's not the, this not to excuse her for saying what she said, how she said it, but let's not condemn her for this one mistake because she, her and Oprah both did way more positive things than they did negative. So I feel like we got to look at the entire scope and the fact that we're down in this woman and let's go to Snoop Dogg. I feel like I wanted to talk last week about how this notion of black men don't take up for black women. That's bullshit. I love black women. I take up for black women. But just like if you're a black, uh, if you're a dude, a black dude, black woman, wrong is wrong. And I'm gonna call you out for it. However, Snoop Dogg fucks my argument up because now he goes on social media and call her a bitch. I ain't mad that he's upset. You should be upset because he's a native of Los Angeles. You know what I'm saying? Like he, if anybody feels how it feels besides his family and his his uh immediate family and friends, Snoop Dogg understand it. Snoop Dogg understand the importance of losing Kobe Bryant. But for him to call her a bitch on a social on social media with his platform, it shows one how ignorant he is because he's essentially doing the same thing that he's. He's pointing the finger at her, bringing black, bringing down another black person. Yeah, you're trying to say how you feel to take up for him, but at the end of the day, you're you're bringing down another black person. You ain't saying, you know what, Gail, that wasn't right. I don't understand why you did that. You should try another way. You know what I'm saying? You supporting Harvey Weinstein. We want you. We want to see the same energy from you. We want to see you asking 
Harvey Weinstein these same these same type of questions. We want to see you interviewing the people that you're standing next to, putting them in the same type of uncomfortable predicament. Um, instead, he took the other way. You know what I'm saying? He didn't take the Michelle Obama way. What they say when when you go low, we go high. He ain't take that route. He took the he took the the nigger way, and that that's why we are in a lot of positions that we are in when, when it comes to lack of opportunities, just lack of support because we do that and people see that. Um, like I said, there's so many ways to go about this situation so how i feel about that you know i definitely agree with that um i kind of agree with both sides because i also agree with i think there you know we cannot turn blind sides to the fact that you know racism racism does exist one and we also do have very rich black people that do join forces with these oppressors very much so but oprah, and, and when they're getting money and can stand in those rooms shun their nose up at black people but as oprah well. and that does one of them we don't know that. We do One. know that. We see it publicly. The things that they've done, we could probably pull it up in Google, the positive things they've done. That A lot of people, you, just because you do positive things, it doesn't take away from your negative behavior as well. A lot, there, there's, killers can go give to the homeless. Does that make them not killers? No, like it, it, it doesn't matter. I think that there is, there's a point on both sides. I think it is a frustration of watching why haven't you done this interview with Harvey Weinstein where they have tons of pictures laughing with them, dinner with them, posing with them. Why didn't we see one? Mm -hmm. Now, is there a better way to ask that? Yes, you don't have to go out saying you dog face bitched or whatever because you're upset. But that is a real question. Now, how people channel their, you know, emotion, that's another, you know, that 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 is a strong topic that we need to talk about. How do we break this down of importance and get your point across without you having to do the same role that they're doing? Mm -hmm. Yes, but it doesn't take away from the fact that I heavily do understand why a lot of people are saying what they are saying, mm -hmm. because we do want the answer mm -hmm. and nobody has answered it yet. You know, it's a lot of it's CBS's fault. It's um this fault. But why? Why? Ha why not? That's Tell us thing. why not? CBS, so when I first saw the response, I'm like, nah, I don't put it on CBS. You're going to get yourself fired, et cetera, et cetera. CBS came out and took her side and be like, she was like, yeah, it was some things that um, the network needed to work on. And they took they uh, they uh took action to move forward with that so that wouldn't happen again. And I'm like, damn. Yeah, but we're also, Sheesh. let's not talk about, like, this is Oprah and Oprah's best friend. Like, you know what I mean? Oprah literally said, yeah, your best friend's battle. Yeah, that's my battle, too. She literally said that. So at the end of the day, yeah, I see a lot of people would rather be on their side than against them when it comes to national television and mm -hmm. network, because at the end of the day, she did bring in the numbers. You get what I mean? So at the end of the day, you know, I think it's equal. You know, I think it is understood that, you know. She could have definitely asked the question better. Um, she could have also shied away from it if she wanted to. Wanted to, she didn't. But you could have asked it in a better way. You could have been a lot more sensitive to the fact of what was going on. Um, and you know, even saying that Lisa Leslie was okay with that, I haven't heard that from Lisa Leslie. So I would really wish people would stop saying, "Oh, she was okay with it. She was okay with it," because Lisa has not spoken out and said that. Right. We don't know that. And she actually did look, you know, pretty just like. She wasn't thrilled about the question. We're not going to sit here and act like, oh, she was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so come on. She was just like, nah, I don't. Like, you know, she told her views on it, and she said, I don't think this is a topic we should be talking about right now. We should have talked about it back 15 years ago when it applied. So, so to talk about the part, you, you, had, you had brought up something yesterday, and I thought it was very important, just painting a picture of the, the time that it was in, right? And this happened in 03. And, like, now in... 2020 right that you get this interview you should use your platform to bring the most positive that you can to kobe Bryant, and especially during black history month so it's like yo like you could have you could have left that out and you wouldn't have you wouldn't have lost no brownie points if anything we would have loved you we would have we embraced you because like yo you help paint a positive picture when everybody was not everybody when when a lot of people were talking about his rape case after he died, you were one of the ones painting a positive picture. And we would have embraced you for that. Um, but yeah. I'm done with Gail. Let's go on and switch on. What, Tank? Yeah. Uh, the fuck is wrong with Javante? Yeah, so if you haven't seen the video, I'm sure you have. Uh, Tank walked into the gym, straight grabbed his baby mama, like, get your ass over here, motherfucker. 
bring your ass in the back. <laughs> so, like, you know what I'm saying? That's what he did. But um, And police say they have surveillance of him actually click, click, clinking her jaw, busting her lip and her jaw. That's what police and, say. And she... Allegedly, And though. she uh, assisted them with the case to get him arrested and to get her restraining on him to not be able to be around him. So, they say they do have a video of that. That's what um, they say. It's on the police report. Oh, man. When it comes to this... Men, you should not put your hands on a woman. Nah, I ain't gonna say that. Um, it's hard. I don't know how to explain this. Because I'm not about to sit up here and lie and be like, never hit a woman. Because best believe if there's a bunch of girls outside jumping my my moms, I'm putting my hands on a woman. And I'm just saying, if there's a bunch of girls outside jumping my girl, I'm probably putting my hands on, one more, on a woman. However, um, far as if it's not those extremes or something like that, I don't think you should ever put your hands on a woman, especially like that. And I feel like with that, you're in a public place, you're publicly humiliating her. And it's just like, come on. I, honestly, how I feel about it is like, damn. Like when I first saw it, it's like, fuck, Tank from Baltimore. Damn. Like it kind of blew me because it's like, why it got to be you? Like, and I just feel like it just, we got to do better, man, as men, as setting an example, uh, too, as holding other men accountable. Um, it's just, you just gotta be better. Yeah, um, I definitely think he did way too much and to yoking her up in this completely packed out fucking stadium. Like, as if, like, you're not a celebrity and eyes are gonna be on you to catch this on camera. Like, um, it's just, like, the thing is with Javon say that I don't realize he sees that most of his life is publicized. Like he sees that he's been in the blogs tons of times. He sees that he's been in the blogs in a negative notion in another relationship tons of times. So you would think that you tread more lightly, but what does it take for you to tread lightly? Like, what does it take for you to be mindful of your own situation? Like you've already dealt, I already said he put, she, he put her hands on her too. Like, so it's like, You've already been in these negative lights. You're already, you just was arrested outside for soliciting with Yaya, uh, Floyd, Floyd's ex. You just, like, you're in the news, like, literally every week. So you gotta know, like, I'm going to be in the news again. Like, you gotta know, like, what, what does it take? Does it take you getting arrested? Does it take you continuously? How many times do you need to be humiliated in the public eye and have your name tarnished and constantly having to explain yourself or say sorry or go on these hiatus to fix the problem? What do you need to be done for you to just understand that I can no longer move like this? Like, I cannot do that. I think for these younger and um, not even younger, but new, for these new talents and these new superstars, it has to be like some type of program to go through, like some some type of program that's going to get you used to this, or like probation pre prelim prelim preliminary trial. Because what happens is a lot of these people aren't used to the spotlight. So once they get the spotlight, and it's no it's no excuse, but once they get the spotlight, it's like they continue to do what they've been doing. Like these people been doing these things before they got the spotlight. Now that they got mm -hmm. spotlight, the whole world is just seeing it. Yeah. It ain't nothing different. So it's like. I think we should, again, hold ourselves accountable, like having some type of mentoring programs for these newer uh, artists, these newer sports players, these newer superstars, period, because a lot of times they get this spotlight and they're not even used to it. They don't know what to do with it. And it's like, that should not ever happen, superstar or not, right. period. Right. But the it fact should. that you're a superstar, it it weighs on you times 10. It's like, yo, like you, you got to know better. Yeah, he has to know better. But, I mean, it seems like it doesn't matter young or old if they know better because fucking Meek and Nikki is wildin' too. And I'm very fucking disappointed at them being OGs in the game. Like, y'all fucking know better. And y'all are out here arguing and gut-punching each other on fucking Twitter. Like, it's like, when the fuck do people understand, like, this is not for the public. Like, and this is not something, like... Niggas, everybody's so unbothered, but be bothered. I don't understand. Like, and it cl it clearly shows that money doesn't mean a thing because it does not conclude to your happiness because y'all so rich and so poor in spirit. Like y'all keep fucking that show. Like sitting here, <coughs> excuse me, on the internet attacking each other. Y'all got a whole other significant others. Y'all, you talking about your, like why the fuck are you arguing with your ex on Twitter? Yeah, I didn't... my ex, yeah. my ex. Who's that? I don't even know this nigga. He's liking my man's picture. Oh, he's a fan. Nikki, you just was like, these motherfuckers is fans. Everybody a fan and everybody a son until you arguing with them. I don't understand. 
Meek. Meek. Like, you got a whole movie coming out, my nigga. You a whole, in the whole reform, and you just showing your ass on Twitter, but you inspiring the youth to do better. Get the fuck out of here. Like, y'all have no under, like, I don't understand. All right. In the I rap, don't understand. In a rap beef, who won it, Nikki or Meek? Nikki, the fuck is you talking about? You bugging. In a rap beef? She can't rap She no can't more. what? She's going to be like, you're my son, you're my son. No, I didn't hear her say that. Nothing then yikes, no sons, anything. So what Meek, are we talking about? Meek will chop her fucking head off. Nikki will chop Meek up. Stop it. Like, stop it. Stop it. I, put, I, w- I would definitely bet on Nikki. In a rap battle, I'd, I'd bet on Nikki. Come on, son. You're going to lose he, all your he, money, and I ain't going to be sorry for you. No, no, no ghostwriters, no nothing. She gonna hit him up, charged up like Drake. Don't play them games. Come on, we YM to the death of me. Please. Now, don't get it fucked up. I fuck with Meek. Like, you know what I'm saying? But this whole episode looked real clownish of them doing this on both parties. I ain't gonna lie. I thought they both was clowns for this shit. Because let me tell you something right now. I'm never arguing with my ex on no fucking platform. And I'm never arguing with my ex in general because nigga so, kiss my ass. So like, my, what are we arguing about? I'm arguing with my ex on Twitter right now. What would you do? She could have you. You gonna break up with me? <laughs> yes. What the fuck are you so arguing you, so, with? So you're telling me you gonna just break up with me like that? No. Okay, so in reality, like, okay, hold on, hold on. In it's reality, over, nigga. In reality, nah, but it's going to create a major stem in our relationship because what the fuck are you arguing with your ex for on the internet? Like, what What are you talking about? Why do you care about her and her nigga? Why are you liking pictures of her and her nigga? You like her still? What are y'all talking about? And then you got a whole nother girl? Like, but, and then his girl pregnant? And is she married? Like, come on. Y'all made for each other because that's corny. Like, that's the bottom of the bottom corny right there. Mm-hmm. Like y'all are corny Like what I Catch you arguing with your ex You can have this nigga sis Cause not my nigga My nigga better not be arguing with nobody And no ex That's almost equivalent to Arguing in a celebrity's comments The fuck are y'all doing Like y'all are stupid Like what are we arguing What No No I, and I, You know what I didn't like I didn't like the low blows Like he t- You know She talking about him. You know Him You know Beating women she, He talking about Her Standing, knowing her brother raping that little girl, I just thought like y'all are out of fucking pocket. First of all, those are war, war those are war war words. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? All that shit is war words. And unless y'all niggas not ready for this to turn into a war, we can't do that. Like we can't do that. And now it also challenges Kenny because he's supposed to be this whole gangster. Let me tell you something. Somebody said that to my girl, and I'm a whole gangster. Something has to be. Somebody has to be reprimanded here. Like, what's going on, baby? What are you doing? You're a killer. Kill him. Oh, oh shit, you're a killer. <laughs> what are you doing? You're trying to kill him. Just... No, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that's what they say. They say petty is petty. Like, you know what I'm saying? Kenneth Petty out here. All I'm saying, baby, what are you doing? He's right there. Like, he keeps talking to me. Talk to him. But that's what like, why is he talking to me? Talk- you said you're that guy. Like, what are we doing? Make your mind up because you just said if I'm talking to my ex, you going to break up with me. But then you like, if a nigga talking to you, like, what are you doing? No, I'm, I'm saying like now we're here now. But baby, he just said my brother raped that girl. Go do something. Show up at his crib. Say you're down hounds. Do something because now he's wilding. Fuck. Make, no. sure you, make sure you subscribe, man, on all social media platforms, the Gemini Scorpio Podcast. Go to YouTube. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, all that shit. Make sure you uh donate to us as well, man. Um, You can go to the Gemini Scorpio Podcast on Anchor. As little as 99 cents. Yeah. You know? You, How about? As most, little as 99 the cents. The most is not 9.99. That ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? You can do it. I mean, support a nigga. Fuck. 9.99. 99 cents. Yeah. Either way, support motherfuckers. <laughs> you know? Um. Just, you know, and then y'all can come drink this Bel Air with us. What's up? We got a lot of Bel Air in this house. Shout out to Bel Air. Shout out to Bel Air, man. Make sure you follow me on all social media. Mr. underscore J Hill. M-R underscore J-A-Y-H-I-L-L. You can follow. At Healer Bay. H-E-A-L-E-R-B-A-E underscore. You know the vibes. Yeah, man. You can follow the Gemini Scorpio pod on Instagram. And we out. You already know. It's a wrap, nigga. Puss.